Hi guys, my name's Kate, back in my indoors corner, which means you are in Kate's corner for the week, so welcome. So picking up from last week, I had my last day of work on Saturday, which was brilliant. Managed to get a customer complaint at the end of the day. Thanks very much, Dylan, for not yelling at me on that one. I know I deserved it, but you were very kind. Thanks for that. So I've been sitting around the house, avoiding my chores. I meant to do a lot of them yesterday. Didn't get any of it done. Really need to clean my room. That's probably the one I'm putting off the most because it's really dirty. So if anyone wants to come over and clean my room, I won't complain. I went to a barbecue on Saturday night and I had a lot of fun hanging out with some good people, eating some good food. Everyone was impressed by my nacho sausages that my local butcher up the road makes. Dude makes a mean nacho sausage. Whose sausage is it? Nacho sausages. On Sunday, I went to two screenings for the Sydney Film Festival. The first one was on the road and the second one was Crazy Horse. Movie review time. Spoiler alert. If you don't like spoilers, tune out now, bitches, because I'm probably going to tell some. Or just, you know, like fast forward or something, I suppose. I'm going to review On the Road. I think it was really good. Uh, on the Road is based on Jack Kurak's novel of the same title, On the Road, um, where it's basically the story of this guy's journey through America after his dad dies. Um, the lead guy, Sal, who's played by Sam Riley. I think that guy did an outstanding job. The way that he's portrayed the character and the way that he narrates the story, even just the narration of the story, I could listen to that all day. The dude has a nice voice. It helps having really great material to read, but I think he's done a really fantastic job embodying the spirit of this character. Kristen Stewart is also in it. She plays Mary Lou, who's married to Dean, played by Garrett Hedlund from Tron. Everyone's like, oh my god, he just married a 16-year-old. I would like to point out that if you think that Kristen Stewart is a, a you know, one, one-faced character, you know, and you're just interested in seeing maybe a bit more of her, the very first time you see her in this movie, she is buck naked. Go and watch it, because you'll cop an eyeful. I think she's pretty good in this one. It's a little bit more carefree from what she's usually typecast in. So um, I feel bad for the girl, you know. It looks like she's trying, and she's just always going to be seen as Bella, which is sad, because no one wants to be seen as that, ever. Garrett Hedlund did a absolutely sensational job of portraying the character Dean. From the way he talks and the way he acts throughout the movie, you can really see the deterioration of his character, especially in the end scene, or last time you see him. Uh, it's just the like the transformation from being young and vibrant to where he ends up is is really clear. So I think they did a really good job. As always, you know, converting a book into a movie, you're gonna leave out some bits to make the movie fit into a reasonable time slot. It's got a bunch of really stellar actors in it. It's got uh, you know Garrett Hedlund, Sam Riley, Kristen Stewart. It's got Kirsten Dunst, Amy Adams. Vigor Mortison, Steve Bashimi's in there as well. I liked it. Hopefully it'll do well. So then Sunday night I met up with Vanessa and Donnie and we went to see Crazy Horse. Basically when you go to Paris there's two things you want to see. There's the Moulin Rouge and then there's Crazy Horse. Moulin Rouge is more like all the girls standing in the chorus line in really elaborate costumes with feathers and shit everywhere doing the can-can. Very like choreography based. Crazy Horse is more of an installation. It's very visual. Uh, the girls all pretty much completely naked the whole time. They might have like a necklace on or something. It's very, very not reliant on costumes. Instead, what they do is they project a light show on the girls' bodies. There's one where they're like leopards in a cage and instead of having them in a cat suit, they just project leopard print lights onto them. And it's, it's very, very effective. It's very beautiful. Being a lighting kind of person, I really enjoyed watching that. It was very interesting to see the process of what they do from the auditions to making what costumes there are to setting up the lights to going through rehearsals, trying to budget the shows, trying to shut down so that they can make new ones. And it was basically the whole production side of the show, which was really cool. I'm hopefully going to go see Crazy Horse when I'm in Vegas soon, so it'll be good to see that in person. And those are my reviews on 
Monday I had my farewell drinks, which it was kind of one of those things where, you know, you invite a whole bunch of people and everyone's like, yeah, for sure, I'm going to come. And then, you know, this was supposed to start at midday. And from like nine o'clock onwards, I started getting messages from everyone saying, hey, I'm not going to make it. It's raining. There's track work. I don't feel good. I'm lazy. I can't be bothered. Story of my life. So you know what? I'm not going to organize anything anymore. I'm just going to go do my own thing. And if anyone wants to join me, they're more than welcome to. But I'm just not going to invite people to stuff. The only people that show up are Optus people. So thanks, Optus people and Debbie and Steve and Greg. Thank you. I enjoyed the small company that I had, but you know what? It's quality company and I appreciate that. And there were probably more staff members than there were customers at the pub that day, but that's right. That's when you know it's going to be a good party, right? Coming up this week, Rock of Ages, the movie comes out on Friday. For those of you who actually talked to me in person, you would know how very, very excited I have been for this movie. I've been waiting for it since I found out it was going to exist. You know, a lot of people hate Tom Cruise because he's a he's a weird guy, but I think he's just a fantastic actor. Um, he adapts very well to whatever role he's given. So really, really excited to see him play rock god Stacy Jacks from the band Arsenal. Friday night, I'm going to go to Anchormanapalooza. It's a 70s party with jazz bands and scotch, and then they're showing Anchorman. What's not to love? So I'm totally going to be there bright and early, and that is in no way depressing. Next week is my favorite week in the whole year. Want to know why? Because it is my three best friends, Alex, Cena, and Jenna. It's their birthdays. Happy birthday to Jenna. Happy birthday to Cena. Happy birthday to Alex. Gonna be great. I will make sure I see you. Maybe I won't see Cena because he lives in Melbourne, but I'm sending my love. Sending it. So now it's time for what grinds Kate's gears. Tell you what really grinds my gears. People who whinge about self-inflicted things. Okay, if you're going to put yourself through something that you know is going to be uncomfortable and doing it anyway, you have no right to whinge about it. Deal with the repercussions of your actions. Stab myself in the leg. Oh, now I want everyone to feel sorry for me because I stabbed myself in the leg. No, you can either not stab yourself in the leg because it is entirely within your power to not do that, or you can remove it. Or you can get some conviction and just stick to it and go, yeah, that's right, I did stab myself in the leg, but you know what? It's for the best, and I'm going to deal with that. Not whinge about it. Don't whinge. I don't want to hear you whinge. Face. Another thing that really grinds my gears is people taking absolutely forever to reply. I have deadlines, guys, and I need to stick by these. And in order for me to do that, I need you to fucking reply to your goddamn SMSs or emails or call me back or something, anything. Another thing that grinds my gears is people who RSVP yes and then make no attempt to rectify the RSVP or to show up. That's just rude. There is no reason to be so rude. You should get some manners. And those are the things that grinds Kate's gears for this week. So stick around for next week's episode. There won't be any binge eating on lettuce, but, you know, I might have given up by then and just gone absolutely delusional. And then the one after that will be in Vegas, and that'll be recorded the day I do my Area 51 tour. Yes! So, you know, for some sick alien action, stay watching. This has been Kate's Corner for this week. Kate's Corner, signing out. See you guys next week.